Hello everyone, my name is Rose Shards, but feel free to call me Rose, Rosie, or Chloe, and today I'm bringing you guys a video that's a little overdue. Uh, the Youth Map Explained video. Uh, in case you're unaware, Youth is a Blue Star map I co-hosted with my friend, Ghost Lantern. Hey there, I'm Danny, aka Ghost Lantern. I am the one who was mostly responsible for the script, editing, and some of the designs. Thanks for joining me, Danny. It's a bit of a tradition for me on my channel to explain the videos of mine that get about a million views, so it was exciting to see Youth finally hit that milestone a few months ago. But, as I said, I was only a co-host on the project, which is why I'm thrilled to have Danny on the channel to help me talk about it today. Uh, but before we get more into it, I'd like to take a moment to talk about this video's sponsor, Skillshare. If you're unaware, Skillshare is an amazing online resource for learning new, creative things. There's thousands of unique and interesting classes that all cover a wide variety of topics, whether it's tips on how to paint or even some more niche stuff about gardening. It's a great way for everyone, beginners and experts, to learn some useful things and push themselves just a little further. Uh, speaking of pushing yourself, I've really been wanting to try new things with my art and improve. A class I've really enjoyed for this reason has been Sean Guzman's digital painting series, Making Your Art Pop in Photoshop. His class is super detailed and professional, and he provides a lot of tips and tricks that are definitely worth giving a shot. He also shares some pretty useful general rules, such as reflective light actually typically being darker than your midtones in most situations. Also, he provided a huge list of brushes for the people in his class to download, which is really awesome, especially considering finding good brushes can honestly be super difficult. Uh, basically, what I'm saying is there's a lot on there that can help you push your art further. Uh, not to mention Skillshare has no ads, new content is always being posted, and an annual membership costs less than $10 a month. However, the first 1,000 people who click the link in my description will actually get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. So hurry now, because you definitely don't want to miss out. Anyways, back to cats. So, considering this video is a collab, obviously it's going to be styled a little differently than my other videos. Uh, basically, I'm going to try and talk about the things and explain the things that I had more of an influence on, while Danny talks about more of the things that he influenced. Uh, while I'm talking, you'll see part of my drawing process, and while Danny is talking, you'll see his art, considering this art piece is actually a collaboration as well. Uh, hopefully you guys like how this is set up. I think it's pretty fun personally, but who knows? Uh, we're also going to be explaining things in order of how we did them, so since the little scenes at the start of the map were actually last minute additions, they'll be explained after we go through everything else. Uh, a little confusing, but I think it makes sense. Uh, anyways, Danny is actually the one who came up with the concept, so he'll be explaining the initial script and story that he had in mind. The main basic storyline of youth follows along Blue Star's life, showing significance of her trauma via the psychedelic theme. When originally writing the script, we intended to show Moonflower's death. However, after it was revised, we took that out for time management reasons, hence why there's a hawk heart design in the stash that was never used. The rest of the map pretty much follows the same idea. Traumatic events that happen when they hit the chorus, etc. I really focused on trying to make this as timelined as possible, as so it would flow properly and tell a good story rather than jumping conclusively all over the place. Another thing about the map was I really emphasized on Blue Star's relationship with her sister. How it's rocky, and even one point I mentioned how she feels betrayed by Snowfur. One thing people often miss out on the map is the fact that when Blue Star goes atheist, her eyes change from blue to gray. It's a subtle thing that I think most people don't pick up on. So after Danny showed me his initial ideas and asked me to work with him, I actually went through and finalized the script. Uh, unfortunately, we don't actually have the original script anymore, and since it's probably been about three years since we first announced the project, it's really hard to remember like a lot of what I changed, uh, but I really don't think there were any major changes. Uh, what I actually did decide on, though, was the color palettes, which I am definitely looking forward to explaining because it seems like a lot of people were actually a little confused on certain things re uh, regarding the colors when the map was released, so I will talk about each scene's palettes in order. So obviously at the beginning of the map, things are super dark and gloomy. I think it's pretty obvious why we went for this palette, seeing as it's the scene when Moonflower dies, uh, a definite turning point in Blue Star's life. However, the next scene is exceptionally bright and seemingly happy. Uh, I wanted to do this because it seemed to provide a really nice contrast, and it was also uh, supposed to signify some time passing. Uh, those of you who have read Blue Star's Prophecy will also know that Snowfur actually moved on a lot faster from Moonflower's death uh, than Blue Pot did. In fact, in a lot of scenes in the book, uh, they really made it clear that Blue Paw was often miserable to be around due to her uh, grieving. Essentially, what I was trying to show with this palette change was how Snowpaw moved on and seemed like she was doing just great, uh, but Blue Paw wasn't. 
Though Bluepaw was in this seemingly bright and promising world, she really didn't fit in, seeing as she's the only miserable looking thing in there. It's like she should have been able to at least start to move on, like Snowpaw, but she just couldn't. After this scene is when the more psychedelic color palette is introduced. Uh, I was the one who thought of this, and I was really glad to hear Danny like the idea too. Uh, we thought it would be really cool to have the colors changed super dramatically like this for every chorus. Anyways, as for the reasoning, I thought it would be cool for the colors to become really weird during especially intense moments of Blue Star's life. It was meant to be a representation of her mental state and inner turmoil. This is the scene where Blue Paw is told about the prophecy from Goosefeather, and I can imagine that would be a lot to take in for a young cat like her. Since it's one of the most iconic moments in the book, and the original imagery was a little surreal as well, we thought it, would we thought it deserved the more intense color palette. After that, the colors go back to normal. The colors aren't too bright, aren't too dark, aren't too happy, aren't too gloomy. They're more generic and basic, not much to explain here. Things were a little calmer at this point in Blue Star's life, so there is no need to make the colors super extra or anything. Uh, the colors do go back to being more psychedelic-esque when Snow Fur is hit by the car, however, and seeing as I said that the weird colors were supposed to represent Blue Star's intense emotions and deteriorating mental state, I think it's a little obvious why the colors are like that for this scene. I don't think anyone would really want to watch their family member get hit by a car and die. Uh, after that, the colors go back to being more generic as Blue, Fur as Blue Fur's kids are born, and life goes back to a state of calm for her again. However, when Blue Fur later sees Thistleclaw, she realizes that he might be made deputy due to her now being unavailable, and the idea of this causes Blue Fur extreme stress, hence the color change. The weird colors remain up until the very end because we chose to focus on super extreme moments that happen in her life after that. Uh, her kits uh, being given up, Moss Kit dying, her being betrayed by her most trusted warrior, losing her trust in Star Clan, etc. As things, in as things intensified in the first arc with Blue Star, her mental state just worsened and worsened until it seemed like she was just in a constant state of paranoia and anger, which is also what we kind of thought it would be fitting if the color palette stayed weird for the rest of the map. We thought it would kind of fit Blue Star's character arc in the actual books. Blue Star then sacrifices herself to save Fireheart, and as she hits the water, the palette changes back to normal as, like, this sudden wave of realization comes over her. She realizes she's about to die, and kind of wants to be at peace with herself and makes amends with her kits as they carry her out from the water, so she kind of looks at everything from a different perspective and enters this state of calm for the last time before she passes on. Uh, I don't know, hopefully that sounds kind of poetic to you guys, but <laughs> that was the idea behind it. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of the idea behind the colors. I know it was a little long, but I really love explaining my ideas and the meaning behind things. But now that we've covered the basics of the actual map, I think it's fitting we delve into the bits with voice acting that came before the actual map. Uh, the reason why I say actual map is because we weren't planning on doing anything special for a really long time. We were just planning on using the song in the original script we'd come up with. Everything else was really last minute. Uh, we'll talk about the first scene in the video. I believe I was the one to come up with the idea of having voice acted scenes on the map. Uh, we thought it would be really cool to have the video open with the scene with Blue Star, Fireheart, and the dog because it's a really iconic moment and it's right before Blue Star dies. As she's about to hit the map, as she's about to hit the water, we thought it would be cool to transition to the actual map because it would kind of be like her reliving the really important moments in her life. Since Danny did most of the work in this clip, I'll let him explain a little bit more of the process. When making the introduction for map, it was mostly Rose's idea, but I built off of it with what I could. I tried to implement a style that mixed both the simplicity and even the anime look of my art style to her shapes and tones at the times. Uh, I don't think I was too successful, but it was worth a shot. Believe it or not, 90% of the opening was made in Flash. I did a lot of the project in there, and I believe I also edited the audio. There's one scene, however, where the line I'll bring you down says is a little glitchy, and the main reason for that was that I it was really quiet and I didn't know how to properly mix audio in Vegas at the time, so I just ended up doubling the layer and overlaid it on top of each other, which is why it sounds robotic. So yeah, adding this little voice acted clip seems like it would really make the map something special, right? And I think it did. But for some reason that wasn't enough, so I think after that was when we decided to add a whole other mini PMV with voice acting as well. Uh, or you may have come up with both PMB ideas at the same time, I don't really remember. Uh, but anyways, I remember specifically picking the story, she's in one of her moods quote, but I think Danny found the majority of the others. Uh, I don't remember if he gave me some options before we went on the- before we decided on the final quotes though, it's been a while as I said. 
Uh, we thought it would be good to we thought it would be good to kind of help explain some of the themes and ideas in the actual map. For example, we have Snowpaw telling the others Blue Paw is in one of her moods, so that hopefully uh, the viewers could kind of make that connection and understand more uh, what they were seeing in the actual map with the bright scenes where Snowpaw was happy and Blue Paw was not. Uh, hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Honestly, the artists and voice actors only got a few days to turn in their work for that little last minute edition, so seriously, huge round of applause to them. But uh, that's it for the actual maps explanation. I know that you guys are curious, so I figured I'd let you guys ask some questions as well. Again, I'll answer questions that relate more to my influence, and Danny will answer questions that relate more to his influence. Also, this video was planned super last minute, so we're writing the script the same day we asked for your questions, so sorry if you did not get time to ask anything. Uh, anyways, the current top voted question is, how has your blue star design changed over all this time? Uh, my answer for this is super short because I actually did not design Blue Star uh, for this map. Uh, Danny did. My Blue Star design actually hasn't changed in years. As far as Blue Star's design goes, that was actually mostly based upon the image I had of her since I was a child. Upon reading the books, Blue Star was always a bit plain in terms of design, but I wanted to add a splash of a lighter color to make her stand out a tad more. I tried to incorporate her scar coming in later in the map, as well as the fire that singed her nose at a later point too. For some reason, the books mentioned that always stayed on her fur, despite it being fur that grows back. I also added some features to certain characters, such as the spot by White Storm's eye attributes to Snowfur's spot. Goosefeather and Moonflower have the same designs, having similar so designs slash palettes, etc. to help make them either similar or stand out. Another really popular question we've been getting asked ever since the map aired is, in the scene when Blue Star took her kids to RiverClan, why are Misty Kit and Stone Kit yellow and red? Uh, honestly, the comments about this always sort of confused me because nobody ever talks about how Moss Kit and Blue Star were blue or why previously Thistleclaw was purple or Snow for pink or Goose Feather green or like, yeah, I think you get the point. Uh, it's just weird to me how people only seem to notice or comment about the colors for that specific scene. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Anyways, as I explained earlier, the colors were all wacky for that part of the map because it's during the chorus and uh, it was also a really intense moment for Blue Star. So once again, this was done to represent her inner conflict and depression over the loss of her kits. Uh, as for why we specifically chose to make Misty Kit and Stone Kit uh, red and yellow is because we thought it would be neat to have Blue Star's kits be the primary colors during the psychedelic bits. Uh, as I said, I don't know why nobody mentions that Moss Kit was blue. Uh, I guess people just missed it somehow. Uh, but yeah, that was the idea behind it. Uh, somebody asked, how did you find the song and what gave you the inspiration to make the map? When it comes to coming up with the concept of youth, I can't actually quite remember where I first heard the song. I remember feeling a very strong connection to it and definitely wanted to do something Blue Star related with it. It originally came to me as a PMV idea. The reason Blue Star was selected was mostly because she's one of my favorite characters for nostalgic purposes. Blue Star's Prophecy was actually the first Warriors book I've ever read. So when I heard the song and began to plan a storyboard, Blue Star came to mind, and I began to dive into the lyrics a little. Somebody else asked, how long did the script take to write? Honestly, because of how well the song fit to the image I had in mind, the script didn't take more than a day or so. Most of that time was spent fine-tuning things and making things as semi-accurate as I could in terms of what happens in the books. It's not 100% on point, but the point of youth was to express Blue Star's emotions on how she felt with her sister, her feelings with everything that happened, and so forth. Uh, and for our last question, somebody else asked what we would change about the map looking back. And honestly, I really feel like I'd get rid of the PMV with the quotes from a ton of different characters. It really doesn't add anything to the map in my opinion. I think that the intro with Blue Star and the dog and such is pretty good as she hits the water and it's like everything else is like her reliving the most important moments of her life. But I feel like it isn't necessary to have two separate recaps of Blue Star's life. Uh, I'd also sort of adjust some of the script for clarity, uh, because I think the pacing is a little inconsistent, I think. Uh, personally, I have forgotten a lot of things about Warriors, and looking back, I was like a little confused. But uh, yeah, I do try to make my maps enjoyable for everyone, even people who aren't really familiar with Warriors and don't know the characters a lot beforehand, so that's something I would definitely change. Uh, but yeah, Danny pretty much agrees here uh, on everything I have to say, so he's not gonna add anything. Um, so yeah, that's it for the questions and all we really have to discuss about the map. Uh, this video is already super long, I don't want to bore you all too much. Uh, but really, I do hope you guys enjoyed hearing us talk about the map. I know that this video is long overdue, so I really do hope it was worth the wait. 
don't forget to check out Danny's channel, Ghost Lantern. Also, before any of you ask, yes, life itself is still going. It's currently on hold so I can finish ghosting first and then tackle life itself because it's one of my most ambitious projects to date and it's taking so much time. But I promise it'll get done. Anyways, that's it for now. Feel free to comment some video ideas for the future. Thanks again for watching, and I really hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope to see you all in the next video. Peace out. Thank you.